My name is Beth Hai here for Board Game Geek at Gen Con 2019. I'm sitting down with Nozami Ob Obanata from Itin. Yep. And you've brought us Moonbase. Yes. Yeah, so I'm intrigued by uh, thematic. What are we, thematically, what are we trying to do? Uh, it's an abstract strategy game with a theme of uh, moon base development. Uh, it's a two player game. Uh, you're on the moon trying to develop a base on the moon, but you're doing that at the same time as your opponent's doing it. So you, competing moon yeah, bases? Yeah, competing moon bases. <laughs> but you're using these wings uh, uh, used as basic contractor units. And I do want to point out to people that these are wooden rings, too. Yeah. That, oh, no, I, I made the rings fall down. Okay, keep talking. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, using those uh, rings we call the ring modules, You'll be uh, trying to uh, establish as many settlements as possible uh, in order to uh, score higher uh, moon base points. Yeah. So walk us through a turn. Uh, yes. Uh, this indicates uh, the starting player. Uh, if you're, that, yeah. that's, a, that's that's a brilliant uh, start player. I mean, and yeah. even that you, when you put it on the board, that I love that that scale of moon and <laughs> earth. Thank you. <laughs> so. For the starting player, uh, there are six rounds to a game. Uh, each round, uh, player, uh, players take uh, two large uh, rings from one of these stacks. If you're choosing this stack, you have to take two rings together. So let's suppose that you're taking two rings from that stack. And I'm the second player. I will choose my stack and take two rings from that. Uh, then you will also choose two rings, two small ones, from one of the stacks and take it to yourself. And I will. Uh, let's say that I will take these ones. Now you are ready to be in your round. Uh, in your round, you'll be placing uh, one of them each turn. And uh, once you finish placing all of them, that's the end of the round. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when you place your rings, uh, if you're choosing the smaller ones, you have to place it in on one of the Imagine. smaller, corresponding smaller size critters. And the large ones go into one of the large ones. So let's suppose uh, you're placing one here, I'm placing one there, you're placing one there, I'm placing one there, and you're placing there, it's there, I'm placing one there. Uh, it, gradually you start seeing places where two rings are close to each other. Right, uh, I was going to say, neither one of us could place one of our big ones without yeah, overlapping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, that's one of the reasons that why you might want to do it. Uh, you could. Uh, choose to place a ring instead of putting, on, uh, putting it on the ground, place it on uh, two rings underneath. And when you do that, you don't have to uh, worry about the craters anymore. But uh, ah. you, have, you want to make sure that this ring you're about to place has the same color as one of the two uh, rings underneath. So this is okay to place it here because it, this one has the same color as mm -hmm. this uh, ring. Um, perhaps you might want to do the same. Uh, here you can all, uh, uh, place your uh, silver large ring there. And uh, we both uh, finished placing four rings uh, each. So that's the, that ends the round. And uh, now you will move on to whether you can place any sediments or not. Yeah. And then what are we doing with the pieces here along the sides? Yes, um, these are called the sediment pieces. And these are the resource-based pieces. Uh, at the end of the round, if you have a large ring of your color placed above the ground, lifted above the ground, you get to place your sediment there. So, for example, I have a large ring yeah. of my color on the second level, mm -hmm. so I can place a sediment there. So are these blue ones kind of considered a neutral color? That yes. They don't really belong to either one yeah. of us? They belong to neither one of us, and uh, they can be, when you draft uh, the rings, you, you might uh, pick them, but you, you want to use them to kind of uh, advance yourself in the next. Uh, since you have a large ring of your color there as well, uh, you get to place a sediment. Uh, there and th these are worth two points, and that just happens automatically at the end. Like anywhere where that is yes, true, yes. I would just plunk a settlement mm -hmm. down. So you want to play around in a way that would allow you to place as many of these settlement pieces on the moon. Uh, if let's suppose that I didn't place it there and I don't have anywhere to place my settlement, in this case I will uh, choose one of these resource pieces to place on one of the uh, open craters. Let's say that I'm placing on here. This is one uh, worth one point. So if I en we ended the round this way, then uh, you're uh, a little bit ahead of me in the game because you have two points from the settlement and I have one point but from the But at least you get something yes, this Yes, yes, yeah. Um, 
So repeat this six times until uh, you have finished uh, uh, placing all of that. And um, as we're drafting those rings, we set this up ahead of time so I can see what sets of two I might be able, so because I might want to try yes, and get a lot of silver yes, ones. Yes. But I could see there might be an advantage to grabbing some of your gold ones, mm -hmm. so I could place them terribly yes, to um, not help you. Yeah. <laughs> Since uh, there's only a set number of pieces uh, for each color, so eight pieces for um, eight large uh, silver, eight pieces for eight small silver rings. So uh, even if you're taking your opponent's rings, if you're wasting them on the ground, then you're going to make your opponent have a hard time later on in the game because, you know... Right, but you also uh, might be making it harder for yourself to yes. gain points. Yes. <laughs> um, you're using your turns to do that, so maybe that might also be the case for you. But so uh, I'm guessing. So the game runs out. I'm guessing when these piles also run out. Yes. So there are eight pieces placed on the moon each round. So eight times six, six rounds, and that's 48? exactly how much we have okay. here uh, for the, in the piles. How long do you think a full game would take? Uh, if you're used to playing it, and if you're playing it quick, it would take 15 minutes or 20 minutes or so. If you're playing it for the first time, maybe it takes 30 minutes. If you want to really carefully think about what you're doing during your <laughs> turn, it might take 40 minutes, 45 minutes. It depends on how you want to enter the game. I really like that you guys committed to doing all wooden pieces as well. I think that adds just a really beautiful aesthetic to this. Thank you. I mean, aside from the, the simplicity of having just the moon as the board. <laughs> now, is this available in the United States? Is this only going to be available here at Gen Con? Uh, at the moment, it's only available in Gen Con. Uh, hopefully, in the future, we might uh, uh, want, do, want to do something about uh, U.S. It, it, uh, general distribution. Uh, we've donated two copies to your library, so ah, if you go you. to your convention, people can... <laughs> All right, uh, so you can play the BGG Con, at least. <laughs> well, if you guys want to check that out or read about it, you can sure find it on BGG, but this is Moonbase, which is being published by Itten and Nozami. Thank you again. Thank you so much. <laughs>